All right, we're going to continue with Judy Moody, but first let's review our words for this week. Our er, perk, term, germ. Our long e, cheese, bleed, creep. Our e-a-r, smear, clear, swear. And our e-e-r, sneer, sheer, cheer. We have a new vocabulary word, motivation, means what makes us do something, okay? For instance, you, if you want to get a prize out of the goodie box, that might be your motivation to study really hard on your spelling test. All right, we're going to continue with Judy Moody Saves the World by Megan McDonald. We're going to read Luna 2. The next day, Judy came home from school and climbed a tree. She, Judy Moody, was in trouble with a capital T. Why was her whole family mad at her for letting a toad go free? She was just doing her part to save the world. Stink saw her up in the tree. Hey, no fair. Mom and Dad said you had to go straight to your room. And here's a picture of Judy in the tree. This is my room, Judy said. I'm going to live up here now like Julia Butterfly Hill. Who? The girl who lived in a tree for two years, Mr. Todd told us they were going to cut down some ancient redwoods in California, so Julia Butterfly Hill climbed one of the trees and stayed there. They couldn't cut down a tree with a person in it. She even named the tree Luna. You can't just live in a tree, Judy, said Stink. Judy Monarch Moody to you. Oh, brother, said Stink. All right, so Julia Butterfly Hill, Ju Judy Monarch Moody. Remember, Monarch's a type of butterfly. I live in this tree. Newspapers will come and TV people. Everyone will learn how important trees are. I'll call my tree Luna 2. How about Luna Tick, said Stink. Hardy har har, said Judy. Stink, you will have to be the gopher. Gopher? A gopher sounds like a rat. An important role, said Judy. Go get my walkie-talkies. It will be like Julia Butterfly Hill's solar-powered cell phone. That's how I'll talk to people. Stink came back with the walkie-talkies. Judy climbed down to a lower branch and Stink stood on a milk crate to pass them up to her. Now, go get me a flashlight. It's going to get dark up here. Stink went and got the flashlight. Now, can you get me a glass of water, asked Judy. Water? What's the water for, asked Stink. I'm thirsty. Forget it, said Stink. I'll pay you 50 cents. How long are you going to be up there, Stink asked, thinking of all the money he could make. Julia Butterfly Hill was in her tree for 738 days. Sooner or later, Stink, you're going to have to get me some water. And lentils. Julia Butterfly Hill ate lentils. Lentils are beans. Lentils? You never ate a lentil in your life, Stink said. He got a bottle of water. You owe me 50 cents, said Stink. We're all out of lentils. I forgot I used them to make my Empire State Building totem pole and social studies. I guess I'll learn to like lima beans, said Judy. Ick. Rocky's on his way, said Stink. He called, and I told him you live in a tree now. I told him you're going to get in big trouble when Mom and Dad find out that you didn't go straight to your room. This is my room. Then can I have your room inside the house? Rocky raced around the corner into the backyard. What's up, Judy? Besides you, I mean. He cracked himself up. Judy didn't laugh. Judy didn't say a word. You have to call her Judy Monarch Moody, said Stink. Oh, I get it. Like that girl who lived in the tree. What are you going to do if it rains? I'll stay under the leaves, said Judy. What about when it gets dark, asked Rocky. I have a flashlight, said Judy. See what I mean, said Stink. First she went crazy over some trash. Then it was a weird beetle. She is driving me up a tree. Oh no, not you too. Rocky and Stink fell on the ground laughing. How are we going to get her to come down, Stink asked Rocky. Mr. Todd said the tree cutters tried playing loud music and shining bright lights at Julia Butterfly Hill all night to make her come down, said Rocky. Time for Operation Boombox, said Stink. They blasted loud music to annoy Judy into coming down. She just put her hands over her ears and hummed, Oh, beautiful for spacious skies. And here they are with the boombox trying to get her to come down, and Judy's just sitting under a tree. What else did they try on, Julia asked Stink. Lawsuit, said Rocky. I'll sue you if you don't come down, yelled Stink. For what, said Judy. For staying up in a tree and getting out of your punishment or something. Or something, said Judy. Let's try shaking the tree, said Rocky. They put their hands around the tree and shook, but the tree did not budge, not one leaf. 
Tree bark is worse than bug bites, Stink said, showing his scraped up arm. Hey, Judy, I need a doctor, for real. Go get your doctor kit. Nice try, said Judy Monarch Moody. Just then, Mouse came outside and bolted up the tree. Thanks for the company, called Judy. Now I won't get lonely up here. Great, said Stink. Now Mouse won't come down either, and we'll have to call her Mouse Swallowtail Moody or something. I have... I have to stay up here, said Judy, for the sake of all trees and owls and flying squirrels and all the things that need trees, even people and toads. Let's just leave her up there, said Stink. Who cares if she falls? Who cares if she gets in big trouble? Even Judy Monarch Moody can't stay up there forever. You have to go to school, called Rocky. Julia Butterfly Hill got a PhD from college while she was in a tree, Judy called back. Maybe if we ignore her, she'll come down, said Rocky. Operation Ignore Judy, said Stink. Stink and Rocky went inside. Mouse leaped from a branch and followed them. Traitor, Judy yelled after her cat. Living in a tree was a little lonely. Judy wondered if Julia Butterfly Hill got lonely too. 738 days was a long time. Judy had hardly lasted 731 seconds. A few minutes later, Stink and Rocky ran back outside. Stink waved an envelope in the air. Hey, up there, said Stink. Judy Monarch Moody. What now? asked Judy. And here's a picture of Stink waving a letter in the air. You got a letter from the Crazy Strips contest, Rocky yelled up at her. Really, said Judy, looking down from her perch. Open it and read it to me. No way, said Stink. You have to come down and find out it for yourself. I'm not going to fall for that trick, Stink, said Judy. I'll read it, said Stink. He opened the envelope, he unfolded the letter. Dear Judy Moody, read Stink. I guess they don't know your middle name is Monarch. Just read it, said Judy. Congratulations, you are a winner of the Crazy Strips Design Your Own Bandage Contest. Judy could not believe her ears. She dropped down from her branch and Luna too like a leopard to its prey. Let me see that, out loud she read. Dear Judy Moody, we missed your smile. Please call us to schedule an appointment with the doctor at your earliest. Stink and Rocky cracked up like a Brazil nut. Stink, Judy Weld, you tricked me. This is not from the Crazy Strips Company. You got me out of the tree because the dentist missed my smile. And here's a letter, a picture of the letter. It worked, said Stink. Take a good look at this smile, said Judy, baring her teeth, a Siberian tiger smile. It's tiger style. Does this mean I can't have your room, asked Stink. Roar, said Judy. And that's where we're going to stop for today. Thanks for listening.